Welcome to 305 Live. We're gonna do crease defense today. So as you can see, I have my awesome straw hat here from Signature Lacrosse. I'm also using their stick and goal, and it's the easiest goal I've put together. The other thing is that they have sticks now. Honestly, I really recommend the stick. You guys always ask for my stick recommendations. This is my favorite one. Hold is awesome. The release is great. You can get it at a 10% discount right now. To get started, I'm first gonna take this off. I don't know that anybody could take me seriously. Hope you like my festive 4th of July stuff. Happy 4th of July week to everybody. The first thing we're gonna do is talk about what if you are on the crease and your defender is behind the goal? Should you follow her behind? I typically do not like to pressure behind the cage, okay? Unless we're in a high, high pressure situation, we need the ball back and there's strategy behind it because especially at the high school level, you can't run through the crease. So it's really easy for your attacker to pin up a defender against the crease, use it against them, and then just try and get you behind them and go one way or the other around the crease, okay? So I really recommend not following your attacker behind. That being said, if they don't have the ball, you wanna make sure that you can always see ball and see girl. If the ball is over here, I always wanna make sure that I can see both, okay? If the ball's over here, I still wanna turn my body, I can see both. If, if they start to venture this way a little bit, you can hang here for a minute, right? If they start to run over, then you can sprint over. It really all depends on where the ball is, where your girl is, and just practicing being in the right position, turning your body, and always making sure you can see both, okay? That's number one. When your girl does have the ball is step number two, okay? So if your girl has the ball, again, I do not recommend following her behind even if she has the ball. Let her stay back there. She can't score from back there, so who cares, right? Let her do her thing. Um, you are gonna meet her on goal line extended. GLE, we call it good, right? So this line that comes right from the cage all the way out, we're gonna just hang here, okay? And we're gonna just let her do her thing back there. She starts to approach. Now that's where all the 1v1 defense that I went over in clinic number two, you guys can go check out 1v1 defense. We did a whole session on making contact and forcing and dictating and um, how to not get beat on a roll and things like that. So I highly recommend you go back and look at that video to go into the details of sort of playing 1v1 defense because it's the same on the creep. So just a couple caveats that are different, all right? So the first one is that if she's just hanging out back there, you can meet her on goal line extended. Let's say that she starts driving at you, right? You wanna beat her to that spot because if she gets inside over goal line extended, it makes things a little bit harder. Okay, so I'll play that out real quick. Right, but let's say she's over there, she starts running around. I wanna make sure I'm running around and I beat her to goal line extended. If she comes up to me and we're gonna to start to make contact, my goal is to force her out, okay? I wanna keep her on this line. My steps are gonna go like this. What I don't want to happen is open up my hips and let her, let her just go around. So I'm gonna do everything in my power as she starts driving up the lane this way to keep her on goal line extended and not let her past it. She starts to try and duck in, you get your stick back over and you're here. She starts to go back, you get your stick back over and you're here. You try and not let her get past that. Okay, a lot of times they do get past that just because it's a hard thing to do. If you can't keep them back there, your next best option is to keep them so that they can't break the line of the eight meter. Now your goal is to keep them on this eight meter. So if they start to drive up the eight, you're gonna get your stick over and come here. If they start to try and beat you inside, you get your stick back over and you're here. So the whole time you're staying low, good defensive stance, stay balanced. That's the most, one of the most important things is to stay balanced and not overbite for a fake one way or the other, all right? You always wanna make sure you're staying balanced, you're not leaning, you're creating good contact, and you're not biting for fakes. We're looking at their hips, okay? So one-on-one -on -one defense on the crease, that's how you wanna play it. Right, so we're gonna jump into a couple drills. The first drill is gonna be for if you're by yourself or even as a team you can try this, but it's really just for footwork and working, working on getting around the crease really fast, whether you're sliding or whether you're running, okay? There's an opportunity for both depending on how fast you need to get around the crease. I think on a WPLL, Megan Dowdy went over this drill, so this is a great one. Where you stand right here, we can start here, we're gonna pretend our, our attacker is behind and we're gonna run around the cage with them as they go around. So we're pretending right now that our attacker is running around this way and we're gonna follow them so we can slide, okay? And then we go all the way around to the other side and then we slide back. The thing we can add to it is then slide out to goal line extended with your stick over. Slide back with your stick over. Then you could slide up the eight with your stick over. All right, slide back with your stick over. All right, the other one is now let's say we're, we have to run because our attacker is going really fast. We have to work on the footwork 
of not only sliding in a circular motion, but running in a circular motion around the crease. It's kind of a skill that you wouldn't do in many other situations unless you're around the crease. So we want to work on that. So we're going to get here and we're going to run all the way to the other side and we're going to run back. But I want to make sure the whole time I'm keeping my eyes on the ball. I don't want to ever look away. If she sees my ponytail, that's a good sign for her to go because I'm not looking. So you always want to make sure that your, your hips and your feet might be running this way, but your head is always facing this way. All right, so I'm going to be here. I'm going to turn. I'm going to run. Okay, stop, turn, run back. When I get to here, I can slide out again and slide back, or you can practice your sideways run. Get your stick over and sideways run this way, sideways run back. Same thing up the eight. Here and run back here okay you can change that up with you know karaoke to work on that different types of footwork or back pedaling and then sprinting forward and changing direction um, this is your opportunity to get creative you can do whatever you want but the two that I would really recommend is sliding around and then running around while your feet are moving one way and your head is looking the other okay that sideways run is really important to practice. All right, so that's a great drill you can do on your own. The second drill is real easy. It's probably any way that you would practice 1v1 crease defense. If you're with a team, you can put a line of attackers and a line of defenders and just go one by one taking turns. The attacker steps up. You can start by having the attacker only being allowed to go one way and going at like 25%. So we start at 25% speed on the attacker and the defender standpoint so that we can make sure our defenders are doing the right things. They're getting their stick over when they should. They're forcing the right way. They're making contact at the right time. And they're really trying to play fundamentally good defense. So we start out this drill by going half speed or even less if you have to, to really work on the footwork, okay? So we just go 1v1 and you tell your attacker, we're just gonna go to this right side first, okay? So you're gonna stay at goal line extended. You'll start here. Okay, you can even, if you want to make it more realistic, you could start over more, have them start running, beat them to the spot to goal line extended. You're staying here and then you're just playing it out. Oh, do it on the other side. You always want to make sure you're trying everything on the right and the left. So you would do that same thing at half speed on the other side and then you take it a step farther, 50, 75%. Let's play it a little bit faster now and make sure we're still holding our fundamentals, we're holding our ground, we're doing all the right things at a little bit of a faster pace. Okay, then the next step would be to go live. And in that case, the attacker can go either way they want. You're gonna set the attacker up behind the cage. The defender can start in the middle. Or to make it more challenging, you could have, you know, the defender can try and maybe start here. If the attacker runs around this way, you can practice sprinting around the goal and trying to beat them there, right? Because in a game that might happen. So in these live scenarios, you can set up your attack and your defense however you want to try and challenge the defender and work on these different situations that might happen in a game, all right? So to take it another step farther, if you have enough girls to do it this way, we're gonna do the same thing, except now three attackers are gonna go in a row and one defender is gonna play all three attackers back to back to back. So what I mean by that is the first the defender is going to step up. She's going to be right here. Attacker number one is going to go. We're going to play it out. Let's say I stop her. She drops the ball over. Coach blows the whistle. Next attacker comes. Maybe she goes and she scores. Okay, whistle. Next attacker comes. After we're over here, let's say the attacker scored. The defender's here. The next attacker, that third one, is already coming. So I have to make sure I'm sprinting back and getting in position ready for that third attacker. So again, it's one after the other after the other. So the defense is really being challenged to move on from one to the next to the next. And it's gonna get a little tiring and it's really gonna push, push them to make sure they're keeping their fundamentals and all the little things that they should be doing, even when they're tired. Okay, so that's a great one to work on if you have enough girls to just keep it going. And then after the third attacker, you'll switch in another defender and just keep rotating through. And again, they can pick whichever way they wanna go. They can try righty crease roll, they can try lefty crease roll, but always make sure you're going on both sides to get both sides of it. Okay, so the last drill we're gonna talk about is real easy. The point of this drill is just to work on body positioning depending on where the ball is. Making sure that you're always seeing ball and seeing girl. You need a couple attackers to do this, anywhere from even just two attackers to three to a whole team of seven. You can just spread out around the field. So let's start with two. We have one attacker behind the goal here, one attacker behind the goal here. So if your girl has the ball, you wanna make sure you're meeting her at goal line extended. 
your girl is going to pass to somebody else and now I'm seeing both. Let's say my girl's still here, but the other girl starts running around. I have to open my hips a little bit, maybe step back. All right, I always want to make sure I can see girl and I can see ball, use my peripheral vision. All right, if we have more players, more attackers to work with, we can scatter them around. And if we have more defenders, we can scatter them around. And it's just a shell attack. They're not going to goal right now. They're just passing the ball around. And every time they move the ball or they move themselves, the defenders have to adjust. Again, so you can do this not just for crease defenders, but for defenders anywhere on the field. You always have to make sure you're seeing ball and seeing girl. So have them pass around, right? My girl's here, got ball, got ball. She moves the ball over that way. I'm gonna adjust, got your help. All right, she moves this way. Now I'm here. Maybe my girl starts moving to the other side. She's switching with the other girl. And at the same time, the ball moves here. So what do I do? That's kind of a weird situation. Maybe I run over here. Okay, and I see both. You just have to play it out and practice it and see what it feels like and make sure your, your coach will help you make sure you're in the right position. But you always wanna see ball and see girl and just having attackers pass the ball around and having defenders move and just seeing, okay, where should I be if the ball's there and my girl's there? Or if my girl's there, where should, where should I be? You always have to see both. Never let your defender see ponytail. A big thing that coaches say, if you see ponytail, you go. That means your defender's head is turned and your attacker can just blow right by you, make a cut, and you don't even see them. All right, so you wanna make sure you're always keeping your eye on both. So those are the three drills for crease defense. Again, I really recommend that you guys go back and watch that 1v1 video I did, 1v1 defense video, because all those same concepts apply with just a little caveats here of being on the crease. Um, so just to recap real quick, we wanna make sure that if our girl doesn't have the ball, that we see ball and we see girl, where our body's in the right position. If our girl does have the ball, we want to beat her to go line extended right here. Okay, as she starts to come, we want to make contact and try and keep her out behind. We want to force her back behind goal line extended. If she gets in a little bit, and let's say she's in here, our next best thing is force her up the eight. Okay, we don't want her to get past the eight. You don't want to open up your hips so that she's on her way to goal. You also don't want to let her, you know, bring you up and get under you here. You want to make sure that she tries to do that. You're stepping back, you're getting your stick over. Okay, so those are quick little tips on crease defense, some drills you can work on. So I hope you guys enjoy. Well, thank you guys for attending today. Have a great 4th of July weekend. Um, whether you're with family or friends or just hanging out at your house, enjoy the time. And um, I'll see you guys next time.